But I have to, I was like, I'm showing this. This is my He-Man from when I was a kid. And I graciously took it. She said, Brad, it's Bob Seger. And I'm like, what? Massachusetts State Police. Wow. Right now we're going to play Rock and Tell. It's like show and tell, but with rock memorabilia. Uh, Brad, I have a feeling you have some uh, wicked cool stuff. <laughs> I do. I have I have a couple of cool things. I'm going to start. Uh, I have to reach over here and get it. So I have to, uh, At least you're wearing pants. Yourself. This is pretty cool. And, uh, and it has a cool story behind it, too. It's, I'm ashamed of how dusty it is, but it's been sitting up in my studio. But this is a guitar um, signed for me by Mr. Bob Seeker. Uh, Bob was in the studio with us when we were recording um, 17 Days, and he was uh, in just a mutual studio across the way. He and I played pool together for like three or four days, I guess. And I honestly, you know, I remember like the old pictures of of, uh, of Bob Seger, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't really honestly realize it was him for like three days because <laughs> I didn't, it didn't matter. It's just like this man I was talking to in the studio. I never asked him. He said his name was Bob. He didn't say his name was Bob Seeger. And I just said my name was Brad. No, I, I, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? And so we played. But uh, uh, the lady that ran the studio there, she was, uh, she said, I see you and Mr. Bob are getting along. And I'd forgotten his name at the moment. And she said, I said, that is his name, right? She said, Brad, it's Bob Seeger. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it was, I, so, I, so I tried to play it off. And so I wound up asking him to sing on a song. And uh, well, first I asked him, it, it, we kind of like had, to, I had to like build up. I asked him to come. I said, man, will you come listen to a couple of our songs? He said, yeah. And he came listen. He's like, that's good. I said, well, I think you might want to sing on one. He said, well, let me, let me hear the song. And he led, I played him Landing in London. And he said, let me take it home with me tonight. And he took it home with him that night. And, uh, and uh, he came back the next day and I was waiting in the parking lot. <laughs> He, I said, do you think you want to sing on that song? He said, Bob, you know what? It's bro? me, Brad. Hey, Bob. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally. I was in the bar like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> And uh, he said, you know what, son? I will uh, sing on that song. And he wound up singing on that song. And I got him to, of course, sign me a guitar. How often does that happen? Because I hear these stories all the time of, oh, I was recording the album and so-and-so was next door and in the studio at the same time. I mean, listen, there's a lot of recording studios in the world. How is it that someone's yeah. always in the studio at the same time as Mick Jagger or someone? Like, yeah, I love these for stories. real. For real. I, you know, that was, that was kind of back in the day. Now we just record uh, up at a little studio that we own, and mm. there's no danger of seeing anybody like that in there. Another time when we were mixing, it was when we was mixing our first record, too. I mean, I was I was green as grass. And I was walking down uh, the hallway at the studio in L.A., and I can't remember either which one it was. But Don Henley walked by me, and I was like, holy, whoa, hey. And I, I was like, because that was something. All right, so I had a a soldier give me his purple heart one time also. And I tried to not take it. And uh, and he just was not having me not take it. And I graciously took it. I, so, I am did, so Was grateful it because he was it. just so touched by a particular song or what was the story? Well, we have a, we have a, a, a pretty long history with the military. And, um, you know, and so, cause of the song When I'm Gone kind of got us really affiliated with the military back in, uh, 2002, we played on the deck of the USS George Washington and went over to, to uh, Bahrain and played in the Persian Gulf. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, that kind of sparked our relationship with the military. And, and those guys always, I've heard so many soldiers, uh, so many stories from so many soldiers that had our music over there uh, mm -hmm. during their deployments in the Persian uh, Gulf and in the Middle East. And I, I mean, it's astounding to me how yeah. many of those guys listen to us over there. And I mean, it, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard the stories from those guys and it means the absolute world to me. Uh, so from around different bases, we've, we've played a lot of military shows. This is a pretty cool, one of the more like unusual challenge coins that I've got. And this is from uh, over in Japan. Oh, cool. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff with the uh, with the police officers too. This one, my buddies in the LAPD sent me this one, and we have our own three doors down challenge coin that we uh, that we trade. So all these guys that give me these coins, I trade them. So Which from the Massachusetts State Police. Wow. And this is a good friend of mine from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. He gave me that one. I have I have probably 
between police officers and military, I probably have a hundred and maybe 120 challenge coins. Really? But, uh, Do you just keep them in a jar and a bag? I mean, no, where... no, I have, I have big displays. If I, I, the reason I'm not doing this interview in my office is because my Wi-Fi won't reach that far. But I, my office is so much cooler than this. I was trying to get, to, I have so much stuff in there. We could spend three hours just doing the show in Dale. But I have to, I was like, I'm showing this. This is my He-Man from when I was a kid. Oh, I love <laughs> Everybody. it. And see this one, I remember he has like the little, sometimes it'll hang on, sometimes it won't. But it was made to like, that was when he's like before, and like you could hit him once and like a little dip came in. Yeah. And again, like another dip came in. Oh, I love some <laughs> He-Man and some She-Ra as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Big props to She-Ra. <laughs> that's right. And my uh, good friend of mine gave me this uh, several years ago too. And it's a, uh, like a stage book from Johnny Cash and it's uh, signed and that, that's pretty cool. That's rad. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? You know, what did kid Brad Arnold listen to? Is it Johnny Cash? Um, you know what? I really, I didn't. I listened to Johnny Cash when I got older, but I mm. honestly, no, not when I was a kid. I'm the youngest of seven kids. So I listened to pretty much whatever my brother and sister <laughs> listened to. And I grew up in the 80s, so I listened to a ton of, uh, I listened to a ton of, uh, like, Bon Jovi and Poison yeah. and Def Leppard. And the Def Leppard Pour Some Sugar On Me video, the live one, was what made me want to do this for a living. I was like, I want to be, I want to be a rock star. And, and so, exactly. So, uh, growing up in the 80s, MTV, and getting to see um, a Def Leppard, Leppard music video or Bon Jovi, how did those front men form you as a front man? Oh, so much, so much. I, I, I can stand on stage sometimes and or be, I, I still reference in my mind sometimes the Bon Jovi Wanted Dead or Alive video, you know, <laughs> and all those guys. And then you learn later, it's like, that wasn't real. That wasn't their jet. And that was like a sound check that they thought <laughs> that stuff. And it's like, man, but it looked so big. And, yeah. But it made me, it really, it's like, I want to do that. And it was, it was weird. I could see. I could see myself on a stage from the time I was a little kid. I, I mean, there was, it was weird that, I mean, we never tried to get signed or anything. We just got signed from our song being big. On, it, it happened to us like it happens on TV and it happens to nobody like that. It just, it just did. And Kryptonite started, you know, they started playing it on our local radio station in our little hometown down South Mississippi. And, and like record company come and signed us and, and it <laughs> hey, just, we've got this paper sign right here son i'll make you famous exactly you know and but and at the same time didn't have like some like a horror a horror deal or something mm -hmm. we we're always on universal records we, we were just fulfilled our contract with them they are like we don't we've had i mean we've <laughs> had our ups and downs as a band but we've always had like really good like we never had like that horror, yeah. horrible like behind the music moment. Like they were found out their record company was like some crazy crap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, tell me about the first time you actually heard your song on the radio, and then part two of this question is the family hearing your song on the radio. Because yeah. being one of seven kids, I'm sure it was like you couldn't get pick up the phone probably fast enough because the next brother or sister was calling. Well, the first time I ever heard my song on the radio was was awesome. I, I was it was late at night and they were playing this on the homegrown show on our local radio station. Um and I remember screaming I was just running to my house screaming at my mom and dad and they were in the bed and uh I, I think I probably scared them to death <laughs> and my daddy probably almost shot me or something. Um the, and I was the first time my dad heard me sing. Uh, he asked, he, he said, "Is that you on the drums?" So I used to be our drummer and our singer, oh. but uh, uh, but my dad asked me. He said, "Well, that's you playing drums, but who's that singing?" I said, "That's me." He said, "No, it ain't." He said, "That's not you." I said, "Well, it is," and he didn't believe me that it was me singing there for a while. Um, but the first time when we, as a band, heard ourselves on the radio, we were on our way to play a show in Albany, Georgia. And we played it, uh, we heard it on a local radio station there. And pretty sure we almost wrecked the van. Uh, and everybody, I mean, that was somewhere, you know, 20 years later, you can yeah. still remember where you were when you heard it. It's, I mean, it's it's such an important milestone. It's a, you know, that's the starting point, right? It's almost like it chapter is. one. It really is. That's right. Awesome. It was so nice chatting with you. Thank you. Good chat with you too. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. 
subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know, just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.